Hello to my family and friends. It's Richard Garriott coming to you from the ISS. Let me start that over. Hello to my family and friends. It's Richard coming to you from the International Space Station. And of course, uh, I couldn't make an excursion like this without bringing along this. Hubert's Hair-Raising Adventure. Our uh, family heirloom, and also this year happens to be the 50th anniversary of Hubert, as I learned from Bill Pete Jr. just the other day. Uh, and so today, I would like to do, in honor of Bill, and in honor of Hubert's 50th anniversary, and of course in honor of our family, uh, I would like to read to you, and perhaps recite some to you, from Hubert's Hair-Raising Adventure, written and illustrated by Bill Peet. Hubert the Lion was haughty and vain, and especially proud of his elegant mane, but conceit of this sort is not proper at all, and Hubert the Lion was due for a fall. One day, as he sharpened his claws on a rock, he received the most horrible, terrible shock. A flaming hot spark flew up into the air, came down on his head, and ignited his hair. With a roar of surprise, he was off like a streak, away through the jungle to Zambuzi Creek. He jumped in ker-splash with a shower of bubbles and came bobbing up with a head full of stubbles. At first, he just stared with a wide-open mouth at the cloud of black smoke drifting off to the south. Then he felt with his paws just in back of his ears, and suddenly he realized the worst of his fears. I'm ruined, he shouted, or what shall I do? I'd rather be dead or go live in a zoo. And if anyone sees me, oh, what a disgrace. So I'd better discover a good hiding place. Well, he looked all around till he finally spied an old hollow tree with a hole in one side. And he squeezed himself in, but the fit was too tight. The last half of Hubert was still in plain sight. Along came a bird with a very long beak, and asked she too could play hide-and-go-seek. It was nosy old Hornbill, who everyone knew was the neighborhood gossip with, not, with uh, nothing to do. Her eggs were all hatched and her children had grown, and now she made everyone's business her own. Good gracious, she cried as she peeked in the tree. Your mane's disappeared. You're as bald as can be. Oh, how did it happen? I've just got to know. Oh, please tell me, Hubert, and then I must go. So the lion related with obvious pain how he'd managed to burn off his elegant mane. I must say, said the bird, that's really absurd, but I'll keep it a secret. I won't say a word. Then she fluttered away just as fast as she could to broadcast the news to the whole neighborhood. And so in just about no time at all, a group of his friends came to pay him a call. Old wrinkled old elephant and a giraffe, a hyena with spots and a snickering laugh, a zebra, a rhino, a skinny old new, a leopard, and finally the hornbill bird too. Come out, cried the bird, and let everyone see. But there wasn't a sound from the old hollow tree. Oh, please, said the elephant. It's still, uh, there's no need to be shy. The hyena's promised he'll... Oh, shucks, I've lost a line there. Sorry. That's quite right. And so, in just about no time at all, a group of his friends came to pay him a call. A ringed old elephant and a giraffe, a hyena with spots and a snickering laugh, a zebra, a rhino, a skinny old new, a leopard, and finally the hornbill bird too. Good gracious, she cried as she peeked, is she, is she uh, good? Uh, da, 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 da. Come out, said the bird, and let everyone see. But there wasn't a sound from the old olive tree. Please, said the elephant, we're not here to make fun. We're here to consider just what can be done. There's no need to be shy, said the gawky giraffe. The hyena's promised he'll try not to laugh. So Hubert crawled outside to show them his trouble. And sighed, you can see there's nothing but stubble. A most serious problem, the elephant said as he studied the surface of poor Hubert's head. It'll never grow back, he can be pretty sure. Unless we can manage to think of some cure. Hmm. We could make, said the zebra, a wig out of weeds, or find, said the rhino, some hair growing seeds. With some cloths of the new and a needle and thread, we could sew a big cap that would cover his head. I know, said the elephant. Wait just a minute. I remember a cure, but I can't think what's in it. So he thought and he thought and he flapped his big ears till finally he said, Ah, it's crocodile tears. There's a croc in the swamp, said the bird with a bill, and he lives just a mile west of Old Monkey Hill. It's a horrible place, said the new with a groan, and a spot, said the leopard, that's best left alone. Come on, said the elephant, dopey, fate hearted just hand me that bucket, it's time we got started. I think that I'd better not go, said the new, you know I'm just over a case of the flu. And the leopard said, I have a sore spot on my toe, if it wasn't for that, I'd just love to go. And I have a sip neck, said the gawky giraffe, me too, the hyena put in with a laugh. I'm afraid, said the rhino, I'd be in the way. I'll go, said the zebra, but some other day. 
So the elephant said with a look of disgust, I suppose I can go by myself if I must. So he lumbered away down the dark forest trail, flapping his ears and switching his tail. Well, the going was easy the first mile or two, except for some trees he could barely squeeze through. The going was easy the first mile or two, except for some trees he could barely squeeze through. Then he, then the, he made a sharp turn and the trail disappeared. He'd come to the swamp, the place they all feared. He paused one moment, one second of dread, then he thought of poor Hubert and plowed on ahead. He plowed like a tank through the tangles of brush and struggled through mud that was thick as cold mush till he spied a deep pool through the mist and the fog and in the dark water was an old rotten log. But logs have no eyes and as everyone knows no ugly fat flippers or scaly green toes nor long rows of teeth that stick out when they smile for this log, of course, was a big crocodile. Good day, said the crafty and creepy old croc as he slowly crept out to recline on a rock. And what brings you here, Mr. Flabberjack Ears? And the elephant sighed, just to borrow some tears. Oh, uh, but what do you want now with crocodile tears? Surely you don't think that they'll shrink your big ears? Oh, no, said the elephant there. And for me, the tears are for Hubert the lion, you see. So he's told about Hubert not changing a word of the story he'd heard from the nosy old bird. And as the croc listened, he started to grin from the back of his eyes all the way to his chin. And then all at once he threw open his jaws and exploded with laughter and great loud guffaws, and he held both his sides and he staggered around until he was fluffing all over his, all over the ground. And the elephant saw to his happy surprise that tears started to come to the crocodile's eyes. They rolled down along his, they rolled down his long face all sparkling and green like beautiful emeralds fit for a queen, and they dropped in the bucket just under his chin that the elephant put there to capture the men. And when the old croc at last managed to stop, the bucket was filled pretty near to the top. That's fine, said the elephant. Now, if I'm right, poor Hubert will have his new mane by tonight. So thank you, my friend. You are very kind-hearted. And then with a hasty goodbye, he departed. The long journey back was a difficult trick with a bucket to carry and fog growing thick and a great swarm of gnats flew into his face and he crept through the swamp at a very slow pace and he tripped on a hippo and bruised his left knee and tattered one ear on a prickly thorn tree. But strangely enough, he completed the trip without tipping the bucket or spilling one drip. His friends were amazed, and they had to confess they'd never expected one ounce of success. Please tell us, they said. How on earth did you do it? An old trick, said the elephant. Nothing much to it. So come, so come Hubert, he said. Soak your paws in the tears and rub on your head everywhere but your ears. And now that he had, when this was completed, you'd better relax and get comfortably seated. So Hubert crawled on to a boulder nearby where he sat very still, staring up at the sky. And his friends sat around him all ready to shout at his very first sign of his new mane to sprout. Well, one minute passed, and then two and three, but still Hubert's head was as bare as can be. It's no use, said the bird. It's a foolish mistake. That's right, said the rhino. It's all a big fake. But, but, or a horrible joke, said the gawky giraffes. The hyena put in his most horrible laugh. But the elephant said it's still too soon to tell. This hair growing business might take quite a spell. You mean, said the zebra, a whole hour or two? Or maybe ten years, said the skinny old new? Well, they watched and they waited till way after nine, but still nothing happened, not even a sign. And then, and at last they grew sleepy, and then pretty soon there was no one to watch but a big yellow moon. And with no one to question and no one to doubt, Hubert's bare head was beginning to sprout. It grew very thick and it grew very fast, and before even more than ten seconds had passed, the elegant mane was completely restored. Well, it's owner Port Hubert slept soundly and snored. That I'm logged into, and it only has OSTP me up and running. So, is there any other way I can help? And Mike, it was Greg's email that we thought was open. Okay, copy. We'll uh, we'll close it so that he can get his mail synced. Thanks. Thank you. But I'm sorry to say that he didn't stop there. It was only the start of this fast-growing hair. It spiraled straight up in the great golden crest, then off to the south, to the northeast and west, and went swirling and curling and crawling and creeping all over his friends who were still soundly sleeping. It curled around their ankles and swirled around their knees. It crawled up their backs and then up through the trees. It spread through the jungle in great golden waves, around bushes and boulders and on into caves. When the tears reached up, then the growing diminished, and Hubert's remarkable mane became finished. Next day, in a tree where she'd perched for the night, the hornbill awoke to this very strange sight. Oh, dear me, she cried with a wail of despair. The whole world is totally covered with hair. 
Oh, wake up, Hubert. Wake up, everyone, and see what your crocodile tear cure has done. Well, they all waken slowly with yawns and deep sighs, all groaning and stretching and rubbing their eyes. They stared for a second with mouths open wide. Jumping Jehoshaphat, somebody cried. It's fantastic, said Hubert. Amazing indeed. But you know, uh, there's a little bit more than I need. It's a mess, moaned the rhino. A horrible bungle. Just look and groan the new. It's all over the jungle. We're trapped, said the zebra. We, oh, what can we do? We've got to get out of this tangled up stew. They all got excited and started to riot. They all got excited and started to riot. Except for the elephant. He shouted, quiet. Please stop it, he pleaded. We're getting nowhere. And besides, by cried poor Hubert, you're pulling my hair. Well, in a crazy mad scramble, they thrashed and they plunged. They kicked and they butted. They leaped and they lunged. But the more they all struggled, the more they got wrapped in the big knots and tangles that had them all trapped. We're stuck, said the elephant. Now what we need are some scissors, if ever we're going to be freed. The baboon, said the bird, has a rusty old pair, and not only that, but he loves to cut hair, and if you'll all promise you'll not go away, I'll fetch him right now without further delay. But I'm sorry to say it was late afternoon before she returned with the barber baboon. For a while, the old monkey sat rubbing his chin. It was hard to decide where he ought to begin. Then at last, with a flourish, he started in clipping. His rusty old scissors are squeaking and snipping. He lopped off whole armfuls of wavy gold locks and stacked all the trimmings in big golden shocks. He lined them in rows, very tidy and neat, much the same way as a farmer stacks wheat. But as he progressed, it required more care to avoid ears and tails mixed in with the hair. And sometimes he slipped the rusty old shears, and he, some, and he snipped a few nicks in the elephant's ears, and he clipped off the tip of the tail of the new, and the leopard lost whiskers, in fact, all but two. Then finally he came to the last pile of hair. Watch out, said the elephant. Hubert's in there. But the barber clipped on till the job was all done. There now, he said. Does it please everyone? It's too round, cried the bird. It, uh, uh, it, it takes some more off the top, and then a bit off the sides, and I think you can stop. So he clipped a full scissor cool, a scissor full straight off the crown, and then from the ears he went clipping straight down. And the elephant said, that's no way to cut hair, because now I'm afraid it's entirely too square. Oh, please stop, said Hubert. I'm sure it will do. There'll be nothing left by the time you're all through. And besides, he went on with a very smug smile, I have always wanted my own special style. I'm prouder than ever and think you'll agree that there's no other lion exactly like me. You can search every jungle, each circus and zoo, from San Francisco to Timbuktu, but I doubt that you'll find, though you search everywhere, a lion whose mane is so perfectly square. So there. There you are, Mr. Bill Pete. Family, friends, I give you Hubert's hair-raising adventure.